Okay, so our goal here with this uh, particular video is to talk about what a whole number is and uh, what it is not, and then we're going to do some basic concepts surrounding their naming and their use uh, before we move on to other topics. So, uh, what is a whole number? What are we going to be working with for the first couple weeks? Uh, and a whole number is a number that is positive, right? So no negative numbers. That's nice, right? It is. Um, whole, which means no fractions or decimals, which again, nice to start off with. Uh, and then just as a side note, we do include zero as a whole number, so it's all the positive numbers and zero, no fractions, no decimals, right? So I'm giving you an example of the first 11 uh, whole numbers, zero through 10, but again, this, this list keeps going up forever. We can say a million or a billion or a trillion are also whole numbers. As long as they fit these criteria, they are a positive or zero and they don't have any fractions or decimals, we're going to count them as a whole number. So just taking a look at this list, if we were trying to determine which numbers are whole numbers based on what we just said, we would say, let's take a look at the list, 18. 18 is positive, 18 doesn't have any fractions or decimals, so we're going to say yes, this one is. So let's highlight, uh, where's my highlighter at? So we're going to highlight them in purple, there you go. So we're going to say 18, that's a whole number. Negative 32, not a whole number, it is not a whole number because it is negative, whole numbers are always positive. Okay. 1,566,843. Uh, yes, that fits too because it's positive. It doesn't have any decimals or fractions, so we're going to say this one's good. Okay. Zero. Well, the list specifically said let's include zero as a whole number, so we're going to say yes. Okay. And 1.7, no, it is not. It is not because it is a decimal. So these three numbers, 18, 1,566,843, and zero are my whole numbers. Okay? So we're going to be starting off talking about uh, how to handle just these specific types of numbers. We'll handle the negative numbers and the decimals and fractions at a later date. So we're going to talk about how to name a large number or even a smaller number. Okay? So any type of whole number, how do I assign it a name and how do I write about it? So we're going to start off by talking about place value. And so here's the way place value works. In, uh, as numbers get larger, we start off by talking about ones and tens and hundreds. So, for example, I would call this 800, and then 10, uh, a one and a two would be 12, right? 812. Okay. Um, if I make it then larger and go past three digits, we're going to assign uh, another label to it and say this is 313 is the number, right? They're hundreds, right? 313 thousand, and then go back to this one 812. If I were to then go to make the number even larger and it has six digits or five digits, I would look at this and say, okay, this is 306, right? There's the 100 again, just read this number. 306 million, 313,812, right? So this is a nice little guide. But what you're seeing is that every single group of three values in our number is going to have hundreds, tens, and ones, and we just read it as a normal number. This is 812, this is 313, this is 306, and then we're just going to attach the label based on which group it is. It is, is it in the first group, which we call the ones? Is it in the second group, which we call the thousands? The third group, which we call the millions? And you're going to be responsible to know all the way up through trillions, which is if I have one, two, three, four, five, five different groups of three digits, okay? So let's take a look at an example where we are going to state the place value for each digit, and then we're gonna also write out the name, right, in words. So if I were to look at this and say, state the place value of each digit. So here's what that means. That means I'm gonna start with the four. When we're talking about digits, we're talking about numbers zero through nine that are just kind of somewhere in our larger number. So we're gonna start off with this digit four, and if I, it said state uh, the place value, well, I would say that's four from the beginning, so I would call it the one thousands place, right? So the four is in the one thousands place. Okay? This one is in the hundreds place, the two is in the tens place, the three is in the ones place. So I can make a list of what value each of these digits has. Okay, so let's do this for the second one, and then we'll talk about the stating the name. Okay, so if it says state the place value of each digit, well, this one is six places from the beginning. So if I were to do that, I'd say here's a group of three. This is in the three, right? I'm not sorry, the three. This is in the hundred thousands place. That's the place value of the digit one. The digit five is in the ten thousands place. The nine is in the regular thousands place. 
the 7 is in the 100s place, the 0 is in the 10s place, and the 4 is in the 1s place, okay? And so I can do that for these other examples down here. So let's take a look at this big one. All right, 865,704,270. We'll talk about naming that in a second. Uh, but I'm going to look again at my reference. I'm going to say this has 9 digits. So let's start with the first one, 8. If I were to go to my list, the first group of 3 is the 1s, the second group of 3 is the 1000s, the third group of 3 would have my ninth place in it. So it looks like this number, 8, that first digit that you see down there, is in the 100 millions place. Okay? I would say the 6, the second digit in my number, is in the 10 millions place. My third digit, 5, is in the one millionth place. So you get the idea, and we can just actually just sit here and make a list of all the digits and what place value they have based on our little chart up here. Okay, so we're just going to name two of these numbers, and um, I think you'll get the idea from it. Okay, so I'm going to start with letter C here. It's saying state its word name for each problem. So if I was looking at this, uh, and I see five decimal or five places, okay, I'm going to go and from the end and say ones. Take the first three. And then it looks like I have two more. So I'm going to start off with the 10 thousands place. That two is in the 10 thousands place. So I'm going to say okay, that this first number, a 10 and a 1 together, is going to make 23. Right? So I'm going to say that the tens and ones together, and I'm going to write this out, okay, 23 is the number in this place, 1,000. Okay? And then this is the number 416. So I'm just going to go on to the next line because I don't have any space. Okay, so I'm going to write 416. Okay, and so I just took that list. Okay, I looked at my place values. I figured out where to start, and then I just named it in groups. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. I already said the name of it, but let's see how we would figure that out. So again, I see nine decimal place or nine digit places. Okay, for uh, this letter D number. So I'm going to go to this and say, okay, nine places takes me to the millions. If I had gotten a tenth place, I would then be in the billions. But I'm going to look at this and say, I'm just going to say this group, 865. And again, I'm going to write it out. Oh, I messed up my thing. There we go. So I'm going to go and say 865 is this group. Right? This is the millions group. Okay. This is the thousands group. And then this is the ones group, which we don't attach a label to. So we'll say in this case, again, if I'm writing this out, okay, 865 million, this is going to be a little long of a name, but that's okay, okay, 700, oop, I wrote the number, which we're not doing, okay, just force of habit when you say seven, so I'll write 704, that's what this middle in between those two commas is the number 704, so I'll say 704,000, because this middle group is in the thousands, okay. 270, and I'm just going to write that out, 200, excuse my terrible handwriting, 70, okay? So. This is really all we're looking at at the beginning. We're going to say, can I look at a number, know how to state its name, know what the value of each of these digits are? So like, for example, knowing, looking at this and knowing that that 5 represents 5 million. It doesn't represent 5. It doesn't matter like what I can count on my hand. That's the number we're using. But because it's in the seventh place, starting from the right, if I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that is the 5 millions place. That number actually represents 5 million. Okay? So that's really what we're trying to get to with this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about um, using whole numbers to perform operations, okay? and we will continue from there.